You know, several years ago, we saw Hurricane Ike hit the Gulf Coast. It was a really powerful hurricane. And the front page of a Texas newspaper and CNN wrote, certain death to those who don't vacate. Now, you wouldn't say the writers of that article are mean for issuing that statement. No, you'd be grateful for the warning. The same way, God's given us a clear warning. There really is a hell. And it's far worse than you can imagine. Jesus talked about it in 46 different verses because that's what he saved us from. So you're going to hear about how horrible it is, but you're going to see that it's your own words that send you there. I'm going to show you that. It's not God sending anybody there. He's trying to keep people out. And, um, you know, but it's far worse than you can imagine. But the other good news is not one person has to go there. Nobody online listening, no one has to go there. It's your decision. God loves you and he gives us a free will to choose. That's right. Come on, come on. on November 23rd, 1998, God gave me an experience that changed my life. This was not a near-death experience. This was an out-of-body experience that's classified as a vision in the Bible. In 2 Corinthians 12, 1 and 2, Paul, when he was caught up into heaven in a vision, he said whether in the body or out of the body, he didn't know. Well, the Lord showed me that I left my body. So in a vision, you can actually travel, like Paul and John actually went to heaven in their spirit bodies. 1 Corinthians 15, 44 talks about a natural body and a spirit body. And uh, in Ezekiel chapter 8, he was picked up by his hair and carried from Babylon to Jerusalem. He was told to eat. He experienced the sweetness of the food in his stomach. He wept. He conversed. My point is, in a vision, you can experience the same things that you would in your physical body, and it's just as real. Not to compare my experience with any of the great men of the Bible. I'm just trying to give you a scriptural basis of how this can occur for a Christian. I was a Christian for 28 years when this occurred. The only way a Christian can see hell is in a dream or a vision. Job 7.14 says, You scare me with dreams and terrify me through visions. So you can have a terrifying vision. Isaiah 21.2, He was given a grievous vision. And in uh, Job 4.14, Eliphaz was given a vision that caused his bones to shake. So you can't have a grievous, terrifying, bone-shaking vision. Now you might say, Bill, why do I need to hear about hell? I'm a Christian, I'm not going there. Three quick reasons. Number one, when you understand how severe hell is, you'll be much more appreciative of your own salvation from what you were saved from. See, a lot of Christians today believe in a teaching called universalism or annihilationism. And that's not true. Jesus said in Matthew 25, 46, these shall go into everlasting life and these shall go into everlasting punishment. The word everlasting is the word ionios. So just as heaven is everlasting, so is hell everlasting. You'll thank God you were saved from this horrible place. Number two, it will cause you as a Christian to walk more in the fear of the Lord. You won't want to live compromised and play around with sin. You know, Jesus said in Mark 9, 47, if your eye offends thee, pluck it out. It's better for you to enter into life maimed than in a hell fire. So it will cause you to walk the straight walk. You know, Proverbs 16, 6 says, by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So when you understand how severe hell is, man, you'll think, I can like a dime. I'm going to walk straight Women and circumspect and holy before I began God. Taking hormones at the age so of that's 16. what I'll do. What is the fear of the Lord? Deuteronomy 6 and Deuteronomy 17 said the fear of the Lord is to read His Word daily and to obey His Word daily. That we have enough respect for Almighty God that we'll obey Him. See, when, that's what you have to do. When you fear the Lord, you obey Him. And number three, it gives us all, as Christians, more of a passion for the lost, a desire to want to witness. See, but most Christians come to church, and that's great, but they hardly, Bill Bright said only 2% of Christians even bother to witness. 2%. Yet that's what we're all called to do. But see, when you see how severe hell is, you'll think, man, I didn't know it was that bad. I cannot let my family go there or my friends. See, now you'll get up each day and you'll say, Lord, use me. Put me in front of somebody today that I can be an influence to. You'll pray more diligently when you understand how severe hell is. See, you'll pray. You'll get on your knees. Maybe you'll pray and fast for family members. You'll cry out to God and say, Lord, send labors across their path. Father, touch their hearts. Open their eyes to the truth. They cannot go there. I will not let my family go to hell. That's what it'll put in your heart when you see how severe hell is. Because this place is worse than you can imagine, and it's forever. They'll never get out. But see, as Christians, we can pray. We can pray for them so they won't have to go, especially your family. You can claim thy whole household shall be saved. My family is not going to hell. They're going to serve God. That's right. 
that's what it'll put in your heart. I want to just take about five minutes and show you just a short film of what it would be like for a Christian who didn't share their faith. Let's watch that. What if? What if you had a friend who died without knowing Jesus as their personal savior? What if he or she went to hell? What if one day you received a letter in the mail from beyond? A letter from hell. A letter from your friend in the flames of eternal torment. The following is a dramatic presentation. It was written by a fictitious high school student named Josh to a friend named Zach. Although Zach had every opportunity to tell Josh about Jesus, he didn't. They were best friends. They played soccer together, they went to classes together, they partied together, they shared their lives with each other. But there was one thing Zach held back from Josh, his personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The rest of the story is simple and sad. A few too many beers, a tragic drive home, a crash, a death, a funeral, a letter. Here is that letter in its entirety. A letter from hell. Dear Zach, I died today. It's a lot different than I expected. You see, I always thought dying would bring me into a world that's foggy and hazy. But this place is crystal clear. It's even more real than my life on Earth. I can think. I can talk. I can even feel. Right after the wreck, I could feel my spirit leaving my body. It was the weirdest thing, Zach. I thought I heard you screaming out to me, man. You must have been just imagining things. At first, I was just standing in line. Getting registered, I guess. They asked me for my name and began to look in this thing they called the Book of Life. I guess they couldn't find it though, because this huge angel standing next to me grabbed me by the arm and started dragging me away. I was terrified. I had no idea what was going on. I asked the angel where he was taking me, but he didn't answer. So I asked him again. Finally, he told me that only those whose names were written in the Book of Life could enter heaven. 